Hello everyone, welcome to our short instructional video on making your own mold cider or mold wine. If you want to skip just the mold wine recipe, go to this spot in the video. And if you're hanging around for the cider, we will begin with that next. So we did a little bit of editing magic to bring you the final product before we even started the process. Truly magic, I know. Well, I can't show it to you without spilling. The cider did turn out awesome. As you can see, we have some nice steam rising up it. You can really smell all the spices and it does taste pretty good though. It's really hot, so be careful. It tastes like the perfect drink for a winter staycation or date night. So if you are home streaming things in the library's free streaming service canopy, this is a perfect drink to go with that. But let's start at the very beginning for our process and that will be with the ingredients. To start our cider out with, we will need a whole gallon of apple cider. Now, technically you can use apple juice, it'll work just fine. The main difference between apple cider and apple juice is the level of filtration and the juice is actually pasteurized for a longer shelf life. Either or should be fine. Um, my personal favorite apple cider is the Talbots in our valley and you can get it at their tap room in Palisade or you can get it at City Market under the Kroger label, I believe. So don't be confused by that, it is actually Talbot cider. For our spices, we're gonna need a couple different ones, starting with cinnamon sticks. So these are the big chunky cinnamon sticks. Two at least is the minimum. You can definitely add more to that. If you wanna up the cinnamon level, it's really up to you. The next thing we're going to need is about two tablespoons of whole cloves. They're kind of hard to see, but they are the big, chunky, full cloves, not the powdered things, which end up in many delicious fall treats. Next, we need whole allspice berries, and they're kind of tiny too, but still not powdered, obviously, not normal allspice. And like I said, two tablespoons of those. The last spice we need are at least five of the star anise pods. And there are these star-shaped, kind of fun-looking things. They sometimes are a little hard to find in grocery stores, but they are a fun addition to your cider, so do try and find them if you can. Now, with all of those spices, you can just chuck them into the pot along with your cider, or you can use this sachet or sachet. I think it's made of cheesecloth. It's kind of like a tea bag. It makes it a lot easier to get all the spices out at the end so you're not fishing around for them. Definitely up to you, chef's choice on that one. The last of the recommended ingredients is going to be one orange. Um, you're going to cut this lengthwise into rounds. It adds a nice citrusy smell and flavor, which really brings out the spices. Um, it also looks good, and you know, half any culinary battle is the appearance. If you really want more orange flavor, you can zest it before you cut it. That'll give you a more intense citrus experience, as I believe they say on the cooking channel. The optional ingredients for the cider are an apple or a lemon. Chopped up nicely at the end of this will make excellent garnish on the side of your mug. The other optional ingredient is alcohol. It doesn't really matter what kind, you can do rum, brandy, vodka, or whiskey. Uh, my personal recommendation is cinnamon schnapps or honey whiskey. It adds a really nice fall flavor to this drink. But of course, if you are adding alcohol, be 21 or over and drink responsibly but it's just another added option if you care to try it. Once you have all of your lovely ingredients gathered and your kitchen starts to smell like a Christmas market, you will find an appropriately large stock pan. It needs to be big enough to hold a gallon of cider, of course. And I've already dumped mine in there. It was really loud, so I figured I'd do it off camera. We will add in all of our spices, either in the sachet or separately, depending. I kind of want to do mine separately just because I feel like it. It's again, chef's choice. It's the beauty of making your own mold drinks. You can do them exactly however you want them. And the other side of it is if you want to add more than orange slices, you want to add apples or anything else, you definitely can. Um, making any mold drink is kind of like making your family's secret dessert recipe. I mean, there are guidelines, but do what your heart and taste buds tell you to. You know best. So once you have everything in there, you will turn the heat to medium high and leave that to boil and simmer for 30 minutes up to three hours. Um, it seems like a long time, but really the more flavor and more time, excuse me, the more time it's on there, the more flavor you will get. And it really depends on how many presents you have to wrap, how long the turkey has done in the oven, those kind of important mild markers. When you finally get sick of waiting for your cider, 
as it's you know been mulling things over for a while now. We will take it off the heat, turn off the stove, and either take the sachet out or filter the cider into your mug as I'm going to do since I didn't take the sachet route. And you can definitely add a cinnamon stick to this to make it look pretty. Um, garnishes of apple or lemon or orange slices are really nice. Uh, I find it's easier to just stick them in the mug. It's pretty hard to get them on the rim of a mug because they're so thick. But it did turn out really good. It smells delicious and you can see the steam rising off it. It's perfect for a cold night. But in the off chance you don't drink all of this tonight, which is reasonable, there's a lot here. Um, you're gonna wanna let it cool all the way down to room temperature all the way because it's definitely hot right now and then either carefully pour or funnel it into a airtight container mason jars are perfect or you have a big growler like this from one of the local breweries this is an excellent option just any bottle that you can stick in the refrigerator is fine it will keep for up to three days so you do want to drink it somewhat quickly but it's super easy to stick in a mug heat up in the microwave or put in a saucepan to heat up on the stove should you want to go that route so it'll be there for you in the next couple days Next up is our mulled wine recipe. Welcome if you skipped here from the beginning of the video. And for those of you who watched the cider bit just before this, you have an added advantage as the recipes are very similar. We're gonna end up with something, which I can't really show you without spilling it, but you can kind of see the steam coming off, that looks and smells like this. It's delicious, the spices came out excellent, and the added garnish, or apple slice if it falls into it, are pretty decent as well. Either way, as one of my favorite actresses likes to sing in The Sound of Music, let's start at the very beginning. The base for our mold wine will of course be wine. You will want one bottle of red wine, um, something fruity but not too sweet is recommended, so something like a Merlot, a Zinfandel, or a Cabernet Sauvignon is recommended. Uh, the library's red wine, which is called Well Red, is a perfect addition to this recipe I might add. Um, it was made in partnership with Grand River Vineyards, which is a really cool local partnership, and it helps the library. So, if you need some of this for your mulled wine, it can be found at the Grand River's Tasting Room. After our wine, we will also need two cups of either apple cider, apple juice, or orange juice. It really just depends on what kind of flavor you want in your mulled wine. I'm going to use apple cider since I already have a bunch of it from the previous apple cider recipe. You will also need a quarter cup of something sweet. That can be honey or maple syrup. Um, I'm gonna use white sugar, but you can also use brown sugar as well. Just kinda depends what you're looking for. You will also need one orange cut into rounds widthwise. You can also zest the orange before you cut it if you want more of that citrus flavor. The spices we're going to be adding to the mulled wine are perfect for the festive season. You will probably know them when you smell them just by smell alone, but you will do Cinnamon sticks, at least two cinnamon sticks, but you can really do as many as you want. It's an awesome flavor, it fits in well, so do what you choose. You will also need two tablespoons of whole cloves. So these are kind of look like tiny tweaks or something, but they are not the powdered version. That's the only thing you want to avoid. So two tablespoons whole cloves. You will also need two tablespoons of allspice berries, which look like big pepper kernel or something but again, avoiding the powdered version of allspice, you want the whole berries. The last spice you will need is at least five star anise pods, and they do indeed look like stars, which is kind of cool. You've probably seen them in like Instagram hot drink pictures, but they're the really pretty ones which add a really nice flavor. So you will need all of those, and we can either throw them in the pot, which is kind of willy nilly, or you can get a little cheese clock sachet which makes it a little easier to take out at the end, kind of like a tea bag. As for optional things you can add to your mulled wine, an apple or a lemon are great additions for flavor, but they also make excellent garnish at the end. You can really add as much as you want or cut them up as you want, et cetera, et cetera. The mulled wine is gonna be good pretty much no matter what you do. So feel free to get creative and try new things out. So most of you won't be making both of these recipes at the same time. I, however, am. So once you have used your normal stock pot, get the really big stock pot you normally never use out of the closet and set that on the stove to about medium heat. This is where we're gonna stick our wine. 
the two cups of apple cider or apple juice slash orange juice that you picked out. And then wait for it to come to a simmer before we add in the other spices. Once we add in all of our liquids, we will also add in whatever sweet item you picked, in my case sugar, so the quarter cup sugar. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a stir. And I'm gonna wait for that to come to a simmer and then add in all the spices. So that'll be the cinnamon, the cloves, allspice, aniseed, and my orange slices. And from that point, you'll give it 30 minutes of cook time, a kind of that light simmer. You don't wanna boil off the alcohol, of course, so keep an eye on it. And at that point, it should be good. So we'll be back here in about 30 minutes. Now that it's been 30 minutes and you've had time to put on your ugliest holiday sweater, we are now prepared to get the mold wine out of our giant stock pot here. So if you use the sachet, that's really easy to just get out quickly and then avoid the bigger pieces. I did not, so I'm gonna use my handy dandy little filter contraption here. It seems to work pretty well. It is still gonna be pretty toasty even though we didn't have it at a full boil, so be careful, however. And it should smell amazing by this point. Mine definitely does, and I hope yours does as well. Yes. And then I did originally have a little apple garnish on the side, but turns out garnishes don't stick super well on bugs. So you can stick your garnish on the side or stick it in there. Apple, lemon, or orange are all good options to give it a nice little bit. And since you may or may not be drinking all this tonight, you know, um, for storage, you're gonna to wanna to let it cool all the way down and then use a funnel to put it into some kind of airtight container. A mason jar will work super well. If you have one of these big old growlers from many breweries in town, this is a good option too. It can stay refrigerated for, at least in my experience, just about forever, but to be safe, let's go with a week. You're gonna to wanna to stick it in the fridge and then you can just pour it in a cup and heat it up in the microwave or pour it in a pan and heat it up on the stove whenever you're ready for it. So that's your mold wine, and I hope it turned out as well as mine did. Now that you hopefully have a festive, warm beverage of your choice in hand, um, there's not much else to do besides enjoy the season and stay warm. While you're drinking your drink, I may recommend The Vine Witch by Lou Ann Smith if you're enjoying the mold wine. It goes over really well, it's a nice theme. If you're going for the cider, I have a nice cozy mystery, Apple Cider Slang by Julie Lindsay as well. If you're not really into the fiction stuff and you want to continue your holiday baking and cooking and drink making, we have other books you can check out. Holiday Cookies, Holiday Cocktails, and then a personal favorite of mine called The Drunken Botanist by Amy Stewart. It's available as a you know, physical book, of course, but we also have an e-audiobook you can get on Libby and Overdrive, which is read by the author herself. She gets into all of the history and science behind various alcohols and what specific plants they come from. It's kind of a fun one. Either way, I hope you enjoyed our video and I hope you enjoy the season. Bye now.